Go. Hi, my name is Ann Fasson, and um, I have been working on a project for the Encyclopedia of Life. Now, like Gordon came before me, I am a biologist by training, um, so I don't know that there's going to be a whole lot of surprising Python-y stuff in this talk. Um, I actually first started using Python back in October when this group had a beginner teaching workshop. So that's when I got started, and then I started working on this in March. So that's how fast this has been moving. So I'm perfectly open to suggestions or anything that anybody has to tell me. So um, for those of you who don't know, the Encyclopedia of Life is a website with the mission of building a web page for every species on the planet. And we do this by aggregating content rather than having people author species pages. So what we do is we have relationships with other people that we call content partners to feature their content on an EOL taxon page. And we use a bit of biology and programming magic to make everything appear on the correct page. And that's actually another very interesting talk that could be given at some other time. But I'm specifically going to talk about, oh boy. All right. I'm specifically going to talk about what I've been doing uh, for this project. So this is an example of a species page on the Encyclopedia of Life for the great white shark, Carcharodon carcarius. And you can see in these tabs here that we have many different types of content. We have images, we have text, we have maps, video files, sound files, we even have uh, content in multiple languages. Um, and all of this content is accessible through an API. Cool. And each of these pieces of content has a long alphanumeric uh, identifier so that you can call up specific uh, bits that you want to work with. And all of the bits are organized under these different headings. So you could specifically pull out morphology text if that's what you are interested in. So EOL represents this huge treasure trove of biological information and most of it is in human readable text. It represents centuries of biological information and billions of dollars in research. And so one of the main motivators of the Encyclopedia of Life right now is to find a way to make this much more computable and make it much more usable. So I've been trying to do two things for this project. One is to see if we can automatically assign some relevant URIs to different, text, uh, to different text objects and by proxy to uh, different taxa. So if we look in the text on a species page, we see that we have a few uh, important words. Now, um, what they're interested in right now specifically are ecologically relevant URIs and ecologically relevant information. There is another community of people doing work on morphology and physiology and all of that, but this is just going to focus on ecology. So here we have some important words like ovoviviparous, <laughs> electroreception, predators. These are all words describing the topic of the taxon page. And it might be helpful to a user to be able to associate a URI for ovoviviparous to this text object and to that species, which is ovoviviparous. Uh, so ovoviviparous means that this species uh, has eggs that they incubate internally, they hatch internally, and they give birth to live young. So. Okay, so basically what I did is I wrote some code to go to the API and given a list of these text object IDs, it goes through and pulls the text object and then it looks through the text 
four terms that I have told it I care about. Now, these terms are in a dictionary so that the word or phrase is the key and the URI is the value. So when it goes through, it finds a key, it returns the value, and then it spits out the taxon ID and the URI at the end. So this depends almost, well, entirely on the dictionary that you're using and how you construct that dictionary. So the performance metrics for what I have done are really not that bad. Um, so a perfect is a one, for those of you who are not familiar with these metrics. So recall is perfect, which of course um, you would expect. Um, the F score is 0.942, which is really good. The precision is um, a little low. Uh, it's really not that bad, but that's basically because you get some false positives. What kind of false positives? Our biggest problem is our terms on a taxon page that are describing related taxa. So when we, if we go back to the shark example, there would, might be a sentence saying that to avoid, uh, a, a shark has to approach a dolphin in this way to avoid their echolocation. So the shark gets tagged with echolocation. And that's not, even though the shark doesn't have echolocation. So, but one strength that I can see in this method is the, the way that we can cope with many ways to say the same thing. So instead of just searching for ophagy and assigning the URI for ophagy, I can say uterine cannibalism is a phrase. And if you see that phrase, you should attach the URI for ophagy. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> don't stop, don't stop. Keep it's going. exactly Sorry. what it sounds. Exactly what it sounds. So when these little guys hatch in the shark's uterus, the older siblings might eat their younger siblings in the uterus before they're born. It doesn't sound like that, though. So, <laughs> so this suggests that they're, um, this sounds a lot like a word net or a biologically focused word net, which I think would be very useful. And the other thing that I've been trying to do for them is set up a species, an ecological species associations network. So instead of just looking for relevant terms, you're also looking for species names. So in this text about the shark, we see elephant seals, sea lions, Pandarus smithii, and Pandarus sinuatus. And finding taxon names is actually a very difficult problem. There are a lot of people out there trying to work on it, but there is an API that does it. And when I was here at Project Night, I managed to stump three people trying to get this thing to work. And I basically found a workaround that just limits the length of the text object before sending it to the API and made it work. I don't know why, it didn't really solve the problem. But anyway, so this you're a software engineer. <laughs> <laughs> That's called Buddha. This is kind of what we want to get to, this network of species. This is just a small subset. The challenges, of course, are many. The biggest one being that there are many names for one species. And here we have the one species gorilla, which are described by all of these different names. Gorilla barengii is an example of a scientific name. And those are the kinds of names that that API that I used found. But you can also see that these species have common names and names in other languages, like the Eastern Lowland Gorilla. And if we think back to the text object I so showed earlier, there were two species that were listed using a common name. We can't grab those names yet. That's very, very hard to do. And the other problem, of course, is that sometimes the same name are used for two completely different species, like the genus Aotus that's used to describe a primate and a plant. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. <laughs>